Hey, what's up? Some guy from YouTube here, and I'm here to talk about Suicide Squad. Oh, oh wait, my bad. I meant THE Suicide Squad. And let me tell you guys, even though that THE is just one word, it ends up making a world of difference here. That THE bumps this movie up to a 10 out of 10. I can't believe the amount of impact that the THE had on THE Suicide Squad. And, and by the word the, I, I'm talking about James Gunn, because holy crap, James Gunn made a really good movie here. In fact, James Gunn made what I believe, if, if you can't tell by the title, the best DC superhero film probably since The Dark Knight, I would say. Easily the best in the DCEU, which is pretty ironic because the original Suicide Squad is by far the worst film in the DCU. DCEU, DCCCU, the, 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 I can't, I can't keep coming up. Something I want to touch on right off the bat as to why this is a particularly unique superhero film and as to why this is by far the best superhero movie I've seen in quite a while. This is pretty much the first comedic satirization of the superhero genre that I've seen by a major studio so far. Like sure, Deadpool, you know, came out with Fox, but even then, that movie took itself really seriously for the most part in its plot, even though the comedy did break the fourth wall a ton. The MCU has nothing, and DC has really had nothing in terms of making statements on the superhero genre, so for the Suicide Squad to pretty much be a direct parody of the original Suicide Squad, down to making fun of certain plot beats from that movie, I think it's genius, and I think it was a great decision for this to be a somewhat sequel remake, but to also be a parody of the original Suicide Squad. Firstly, let's talk about some pretty basic reasons as to why this movie is better. The characters. The characters are far more likable than in Suicide Squad. I believe they're more interesting and have far more in-depth motivations than the characters from Suicide Squad. And that's just on a base level. On a more intricate level, they're just they're just funnier, bro. They're they're funnier characters. Let's talk about Idris Elba's blood sport first, because he's pretty obviously supposed to be the most apparent parody character on an original character from the first movie. I mean, he's he's a replacement for Will Smith's Deadshot, right? Let's let's not get it twisted. That's what he's supposed to be. Down to having a pretty much identical scene from the first movie where he's talking to his daughter in an interrogation style room, you know, over the phone, glass room, protected, separated from his daughter in the prison. You know those scenes, right? I'm I'm just really bad at describing them right now. But whereas in the first Suicide Squad, where it did have a really dour, dour tone and atmosphere, in spite of the what the insane soundtrack would lead you to believe in that movie, it, it does have a really dour tone. Will Smith was, would talk to his daughter. Will Smith would talk to his daughter. You know, I'm sorry, I'm in here. I'll try to be a better dad. All this trite bullshit. Whereas Idris Elba's character immediately starts arguing with his daughter in this electric sequence that immediately. Um, lets you realize how charismatic both of these characters are, how much they pop off the screen. They're just very enjoyable to watch, and they have a father-daughter relationship that is far more engaging than Will Smith and his daughter's relationship from the original movie. Also, Idris Elba just has a, oh my god, I'm, I'm so done with this bullshit face the entire movie, and uh, it really works for his character because he's you know, the most accomplished actor, I would say, outside of this film, so it's pretty funny that he has that role. Similarly to Will Smith's Deadshot, but so much better. Bloodsport is so much better. Harley Quinn, also, oh my god, she has one of the best scenes in the movie. There's this incredible action sequence where James Gunn puts in all of these digital effects of flowers blooming. All of the naturalistic visual effects come off as pretty comic book inspired. You can tell that this is a comic book movie most definitely because even though it parodies aspects of comic book movies, you can also tell that it has a deep love for comic book, for comic books, especially because of a lot of the characters that they use. Polka Dot Man, I think, is an outstanding character in this film. David DeCastleman has been in a ton of comic book movies actually. You may notice him from The Dark Knight or the Ant-Man series. But this is his most in-depth role yet, and he gets a lot to work with comedically. One of my favorites, first off, I want to say I laughed out loud a ton in this movie, but one of the most unexpected laughs came both from him. Uh, one of them was when he just shouted, oh, fiddlesticks, in the middle of an action scene. I haven't heard that word in years. That's pretty damn funny. And the other, and my personal favorite scene in this movie, is when they're in this office, right? And it's this action scene where they're taking out a bunch of guys, a lot of blood splattering everywhere. The action in this movie is really good. Very bloody, violent, satisfying, gory, buzzwords, buzzwords. 
but they're fighting in this office scene and one guy just in the back stands up and gets his head blown off and all of a sudden polka dot man starts crying you know and he's like oh no Dude, no i'm so sorry milton and the rest of the cast stands up and looks at them and all of a sudden harley quinn says wait who's milton and it just made me laugh so damn hard they're and their interaction about the confusion over who Milton is just made me laugh so hard because it's such a self-aware thing to be able to poke fun about specific things in writing, such as how superhero movies will usually have like human characters come along for the story. Like, you know, Wonder Woman had her little cast of people and Iron Man has, you know, like Pepper Pot, people like that, you know, just human characters who would just die pretty much instantly. And for that to happen and for them to be like, oh wait, that guy's not even important. We didn't even know who he was. And Polka Dot Man being like, you guys have no humanity. It was so funny. It was such a genius interaction between all of them. I think the choice to have Starro as the main antagonist was an inspired choice because it was visually really cool. And it gave a, a Lovecraftian sci-fi element to this movie that made the climax really entertaining, very fun. Uh, it was pretty horrific also, the, all of the visuals about these stars attaching to people's faces, combining them into one unanimous being, and then, you know, being able to murder you if you try to rip it off. There were some really gross effects, and sadly a lot of it was CGI, but all of the practical effects were really dope that I noticed in the movie, and the CGI looked really good too. King Shark had a lot of really, really great textures on his skin. And Starro's textures also looked pretty, pretty poppin' as well, I will say. I've been flip-flopping to a lot of different elements in this movie that I love because I think it gets so much right. Every action scene has like a set piece or a point to it. Like there was the action scene where Peacemaker and Bloodsport were having their standoff. There was Harley Quinn's standalone action scene right after she had a hilarious moment where she murdered basically just a political a political figure from, from that island they were on. Just randomly kills them in an unexpected moment a moment of comedic brevity that worked very well, and then she proceeds to kill all of his guards. Is it fantastical? Yes, yes it is. Does it take you out of the movie a little bit? Yeah, I will say some of the action does go a little far. That is a flaw that I have with this movie. Some of the actions, the the blood, the heads coming off, the blood squirting out of the neck, a lot of the blood is done with CGI, which is a little lame. I, I would have appreciated more actual blood effects used, but... And it is just kind of crazy. It gets to a point where you're like, okay, I've seen so many heads blow off at this point that maybe, you know, we should change it up a little bit, which is what they do. The Peacemaker, who does have a decent character motivation, is revealed to do anything, absolutely anything, in order to protect the United States image in this incident that's happening with Starro. It turns out that the United States directly paid this island to do experiments like this, and Rick Flagg, being a pretty boring character in this movie still, I'll, I'll have to admit, decides, hell no, I'm not gonna let this stay. I'm gonna take this to the media. This is absolute BS that the US is involved in this and that Peacemaker, in his eternal goal to maintain peace, proceeds to beat the hell and murder him and almost murder Ratcatcher 2 also, who is the emotional crux of this film, by the way. She has a, a, a great character backstory and Taika Waititi is great playing her father also. I love their dynamic. But anyways, back to Peacemaker, just an absolute twist that I did not expect to see coming in, in the third act and the climax of this film. It adds another layer of intrigue, and it's a dramatic element that's unique and actually works. It's not something that I've seen a hundred times in superhero movies before, seeing this, this guy turn on the team because of his own selfish desire to want peace and then to kill one of the main characters. It's crazy. This movie doesn't skimp out on the deaths. A lot of characters do die, in fact, almost all of them die, spoiler alert, which is, makes sense for a movie called Suicide Squad. I, I, I mean, THE Suicide Squad. Yeah, and there's just so many simple things too, like all of the scene transitions are really dope. There's like, you know, words like earlier and now sprawled out uh, in the naturalistic environment. It's all interspersed in, into the environment so well, and I really appreciate the attention to detail that that took. Yeah, King Shark, even though King Shark is just Groot, is really funny and got a lot of laugh out loud moments. The Weasel character, I, I thought it was so funny when the movie ended, the after credits scene came and I was like, oh, they're gonna do the BS setting up for another movie thing. And it just shows that Weasel like coming back to life and scampering off. It was so unnecessary, which therefore made it so freaking funny to me. Some of the dialogue and humor does get a little rambly sometimes, as James Gunn movies tend to do. 
but the fact that it's rated R and the fact that he's really able to go all out in terms of the the excess, the excess in violence, the excess in swearing, the excess in just pure brutality and entertainment of this movie is to the moon, baby. And James Gunn, even though it does go really far, I appreciate that the DC upper executives really decided just to give him a lot of money and let him do what he wants to do because it worked out so well. And I wish studios would do this more often. They tried to do it with David Ayer and you know, shout out to David Ayer. But he made a very moody and brooding film that DC decided they didn't like. So they decided to chop it up and add 80s pop songs into it. And it made no sense. And even here, the score, so much more understated. It has a more indie rock punk flair, which once again, works with the comic book elements more and it works with the tone of the film more. Like there's a scene where they're just all walking in the smoke about to go into Jotunheim and it's amazing. It's one of the best comic book walk down sequences where they just walk to the camera that I've ever seen just because of how damn good the score is. Overall, uh, I like this movie more than I've probably liked any comic book movie since maybe The Dark Knight, maybe? I mean, sure, there are a lot of great comic book movies, you know. Avengers Affinity War, pretty cool, pretty cool movie. Uh, I did like Joker a little bit, you know. But this past decade has just been a decade of really mediocre, by the numbers, studio comic book movies. I would give THE Suicide Squad an 8 out of 10. I would give Suicide Squad a 2 out of 10. Together, they make a 10 out of 10 experience, baby. And you gotta appreciate that. Because Suicide Squad is DC's best comic book movie in a long ass time. Please check it out. Please give James Gunn more money. Thank you so much. Love you. Bye.